Hello to my Sagittarius. Sagittarius, let's get right into it. The moon is in Scorpio, Sagittarius, let's do it. That's right. So um, aside from the regular full moon ritual, you can look that up on YouTube. You can look it up on, not YouTube, on Google. You can Google full moon ritual because it's a time for protection. Definitely want to protect the downloads that you're getting in your daydreams, your night dreams. If you've been feeling super sensitive about things, um, having a lot of, you know, just feeling sensitive about um, things from your past resurfacing. A lot of it has to do with Pluto being retrograde right now. Pluto will be retrograde until October. So a lot of rebirths happening, a lot of obsessions coming up, whether people are obsessed with you or you could be obsessed with just going along with people's flow. That could just be like your norm and just going along with people's flow and just trying to figure out how to create boundaries and those kind of things. Um, but when uh, the moon moves into Scorpio, while Pluto is currently retrograde, it actually takes you all the way back to anything that's unhealthy and wounded, like all the way back as far as you can remember, ancestral, bloodline, um, childhood, whatever. Even if, you know, something could trigger you, let's say, let me give somebody an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say, for instance, growing up, um, you know, um, what's a, like, what's something that almost everybody was teased? Maybe a hairstyle or a haircut. Like, you, you know, how people are teased for their hair, like yearbook haircuts or pictures or, you know, that you may have had when you took it when you were a kid. And let's say now you're, you're a, an educator. Let's say you're a, fourth a fourth grade educator and and kids are teasing each other that could have triggered something and you like how in the world did that trigger something from when you were in the fourth grade it, it's it's like that when uh when the moon moves into scorpio while pluto is retrograde because usually when the moon moves into scorpio just even if pluto wasn't retrograde it just brings up just like any unhealthy or wounded emotions about whatever's going on but because Pluto is retrograde, it's almost like things are like slowing down to kind of connect your past with whatever's going on right now. And so that's where you want to be. And on top of that, we're in the full moon phase, which is usually a time of protecting your energy to begin with. So that's where, since Scorpio is a water sign, you really want to double down on flushing out those toxins so that you don't you don't have any blockages with your intuition you don't you don't miss anything of like having unhealthy relationships around you friendships family remember members you know toxicity your money's not blocked you don't feel like you know um you're missing out you're missing anything okay so hopefully i covered everything let's get into your reading sagittarius let's get in your reading thank you to those of you all who put your comments below um thank you for tuning into my channel I appreciate if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. I'm talking to you wherever Sagittarius is in your birth chart, not just your sun sign, okay? Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. So don't forget to do your full moon rituals. They really do help. Here we have the Justice card. Here we have the Star card. Here we also have the Hermit card, the uh, Lover's card. Here we also have the Ten of Swords, and then also the Two of Swords. Here's the Justice card. Um, here we have the star card here. Here we have the hermit card here. Here we have the uh, lover's card. These two cards right here actually are ruled by Mercury, right? Mercury, all of this, uh, these are here are all air energies, right? So air connects us with thought, our thinking, our you know, how we communicate, all of that, right? It starts at the heart chakra, head and heart being at war with each other, right? So I feel like some kind of partnership in business and or in love is trying to come across your path. And so somebody is trying to make sure you're good enough, that you're worthy. You're just analyzing self right now. So um, you're taking the blindfolds off. Your ancestors have been saying you're good enough to kind of sort of go it alone, right? And I'm not talking about if you already have your twin flame in your life. I'm not talking about disrupting your happy home. What I'm saying to you is not being indecisive about whether you're good enough or that you're worthy, right? And so it's just saying you, you, you can make it make sense. Everything doesn't have to be, even though you're a fire sign, it doesn't have to be friction within yourself until it, it causes a wildfire in you. Like everything doesn't have, things can close out on a high note where you say, okay, I survived a lot. You know, I can close out 
relationships within myself in love and still like I'm, I'm ready to thrive. I can use my fire responsibly. I can close out relationships in love and look, take the blindfolds off. I desire peace in my life. The number two is it symbolizes peace, right? So I desire peaceful, balanced out relationships. This is what this right here, Justice card connects us to Libra. When the moon is in Libra before it's in Scorpio. So that's all about peace, harmony. I want to be in relationships with people who are at peace with themselves, who are, you know, who are balanced out themselves, both in their personal and their professional life. So because you are at peace with yourself, both in your personal or your professional life, that's going to take out a whole lot of guesswork. So they're at peace with themselves about their sensuality, sexuality. They're at peace with how they think, how, you know, how they love themselves, their uh, partnerships and business and or in love. Um, they're at peace with themselves with, you know, just do they think they're good enough or do they think they're worthy? You know, those kind of things. And right. And then again, who are we to judge whether people think they're worthy or not? I mean, focus on whether you think you worthy or not. Right. So these two cards right here are ruled by uh, Mercury. Mercury is the planet of communication, messenger planet, um, um, the planet of knowledge, uh, learning messenger planet uh planet of sibling relationships uh planet of travel trade commerce and so when things travel through the air they're traveling you want to make sure as they're traveling through the air um from source you know like as you're dreaming downloads they're traveling through the air while you're at the kitchen sink washing dishes or loading up the dishwasher or putting clothes in the washing machine or vacuuming and things are traveling through the air communication is traveling through the air messages are traveling through the air you want to make sure you're journaling those right so you're, you're learning how to train your mind to say i love myself i'm good enough i can i can i would rather be by myself to be indecisive about um being connected to energies that are not at peace with themselves like they're showing you they're not at peace with themselves and they don't have a problem disrupting your peace okay so that's what i'm saying for you that's what I'm seeing for you all so far. So let's see what else we have. Here we have four cups. Because if you just base it just solely on zodiac signs, then you'll miss out on your blessings. That's why you hear people say, I don't get along. You know, that's somebody may have said they don't get along with Sagittarius because they had a bad experience with one Sagittarius. Now they don't get along with all Sagittarius. That is just ridiculous. That's how people block their blessings. So you're taking everything on case by case basis, right? Here we have the um, four of cups here. Right. So somebody see how this hand is coming through. It's like your ancestors are saying here, load up on nurturing yourselves while you're waiting around on partnerships and business and or in love. But you certainly remember water. Um, this snow right here is a form of water. Right. So water connects us with water connects us with um, quality of relationships it connects us with friendships. It connects us with intuition. It connects us with emotions, feelings. And so Source is saying there's two types of energies that have given you the cold shoulder. It's two types of energies that give you a frosty reception for whatever reason. And we're not talking about just one time. This is a pattern of behavior. For whatever reason, people are trying to determine your worth and trying to determine your value. And guess what? Something having to do with money. Source is saying it's not going to happen anymore. Because it's not like, that's why I say you don't want to just judge it based on zodiac signs. You want to base it on case by case. You don't want to base it on gossip, hearsay. Because that is how a lot of people will say, oh yeah, that, that zodiac sign, I don't get along with them because they are such and such and such and such. And that's how a lot of people miss out on blessings. Here we also have the three of cups. That's exactly what I was talking about right here. Three and four is seven. Seven is um lightning bolt insight this is where a se the seven is the the number for completion right so somebody said i'm turning off the water faucet for something case by case basis i had enough icy reception from certain energy something around money for me to say i'm turning off the water i'm good i'm going at it alone i'm going at it alone for whatever reason something is going on I'm not really sure what it is but two types of situations right here guess what i'm moving on i'm moving on that's right. So I'm moving on. Um, 
and you got a soulmate helping you with something, right? So you got two and six is eight, and then you got eight right here. So two situations in particular, you you are in the light, right? You're tempted to vibrate on a lower frequency, which means you've seen some kind of activity or they've seen some kind of activity. You've seen some kind of snake activity or they've seen some kind of snake activity with either they're saying, I saw something I don't like, or you said you saw something you don't like. In either case, and get this crystal clear, Sagittarius, if you have to call a person a snake or they have called you a snake, then that is an, a call to action. That's what air is. It's a call to action, a thought process. They thought something about, they think something about you or you think something about them. Do not wait for something to turn into a venomous snake. If I think you're a snake at that point, just like, you know, the Garden of Eden, that snake get is a call to action, right? So, you know, I um talked about the even the snake in the garden of Eden where people say, okay, the snake comes in a form of a you know, the devil comes in a form of a snake, right? So there's a there's a there's a whole lot about the, the teaching about just what the devil means metaphysically. So we won't get into all of that, but source is saying whenever you have to call somebody a snake or they're calling you a snake, that's a call to action. Had Eve never encountered the snake, Eve would have never, Adam and Eve would have never, I mean, we're talking about just a story here, but they would have never been a call to action to move out of a comfort zone. So you can look at it even when the, in the medical symbol where you have the two snakes, one symbolizing good and one symbolizing evil, you don't want to wait till it gets to a venomous snake, right? Even if you're in the garden, right? If you're in your garden, you're planting some seeds and you see a non-venomous snake slither through the grass, you're going to hop up out of that. That You're not trying to see whether, let me let you see if that little black snake is a garden. Let me see if that's that little, is a, a garden snake or is it a venomous snake? All you do is call a call to action. So hopefully that's crystal clear to somebody is that, you know, if you see some kind of how people move and you're like, mm, they don't, they don't really sit well with me. And I'm actually seeing a pattern of behavior and just how people, how whoever these two types of energies, how they move, let me move on out of their way. I don't have to sit there and overthink it to a point where I become the venomous snake. Got it? Good. All right. So, yeah. So, yeah, something having to do with money. You got to remember... Um, the definition of money, see, pentacles is not just money. It's money, it's wealth, it's health. It is, um, it's practicality, it's generosity, right? So it's never just about money, right? Um, let's say creatively, let's say you're very creative. Let's say you're very generous with creative ideas and you never come out of your pocket with money. You're just generous creatively, right? But the same generosity doesn't come back to you um, in the form. Or you feel like you're pouring out all of your creativity, but it's just not, you're not getting a whole lot in return. You know, it's not reciprocal, right? Um, then it can be draining when you feel like you're getting an icy reception, you know? So bottom line is that if it's an imbalance for you, that's it. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Let's say you're the one that's driving a carpool all the time and you never get gas money or, you know, somebody don't even offer gas money. Or let's say, you know, you're always the one that's, you know, uh, offering to do something. Let's say, you know, you and your sibling and you were always the one that's, you know, offering to, to pay for something for the kids to have a play date or whatever. And you, you find out your, your sibling you know, buying new this and buying new that and never even offer, you know. So source is saying at some point, somebody's going to have to stop just going along with the flow and start noticing some stuff, right? And um, it's not you being petty, it's you creating boundaries and enforcing them. Ten of Pentacles, right? So I definitely feel like you and somebody, it's a two for two here. So it's two types of situations you're moving on from. Not only that, not only are you pulling your birth chart, you're going to Google and typing in how to nurture whatever your moon sign is. 
specifically your moon sign for a man, woman, or however you identify as Google. It's not even a whole lot of steps and start and just copy it and put it in the note section of your cell phone. We also have digital journals and digital calendars. Those links are below. There's never any pressure to buy anything. I'm, I'm reading the cards, but I'm also teaching you all. I'm trying to give you some very helpful tools and tips to help you with all of this. Like this is the year of wealth. This is the year of karmic cycles. Either you can remain in karmic cycles or you can break karmic cycles this year. You want to enter into a karmic, like healthy, uh, good karmic relationships instead of bad karmic relations. You want to break bad karmic cycles. So that's what I'm trying to help you with. So yeah, you're moving from five of pentacles to 10 of pentacles. And a 10 of pentacles here is that you and somebody creating a very rich legacy together where you all flow together, you know, you and your significant other in love and or in business, right? So you know, that kind of conversation, even conversation about people who are toxic shouldn't even be entered. It's like bringing poison into your house. It shouldn't even be a conversation about them. And even if somebody else from the outside trying to talk about them, yeah, that's all to tell you. That's not, I'm, that's not, I'm not bringing that into, you know, my, my conversations. Here we have the hangman here. So sources saying, hang in there with yourselves. You know, again, you're learning how to control your water. Remember, water is shaped and guided by the earth that holds and surrounds it. So if you're around toxic people who are trying to talk about the very energies you detached from because um, they were disrupting your peace, you're going to have to control and guide the conversation. No, we're not talking about that. I'm trying, I'm trying to understand why you bringing it up, right? That's how you bring, that's how you flowing. Listen, I don't understand why you bringing this up. <laughs> I know I didn't bring it up first. Why are you bringing it up, right? So, yeah, I'm not talking about that. Here we have nine of pentacles. Sources making sure you're financially independent and also making sure the people around you are also financially independent. So, here we have, so you don't have to deal with any icy reception. Here we have the, um, where people are trying to determine your wealth for you. Here we have the ten of swords. Um, so, yeah. Here we also have the five of swords. So what's, what, what's interesting is that source is bringing you, uh, bringing you around other people who have also survived, um, you know, a lot of backstabbing, people talking about them. A lot of sources bringing you around other Judas spirits. Let me just say the people who have survived other Judas spirits um, and somehow money was involved. A lot of creativity was involved. Disappointment was involved. Like in other words, sources breaking karmic cycles right? So when the moon is in Scorpio, that's where you want to sit down and, and think about what a cord cutting, who you want to cut ties with. That's a cord cutting ceremony. Any unhealthy and wounded relationships connected to you, even all the way back to your childhood. So let's say for instance, a lot of people have taken those, you know, those pictures back in the day where they just didn't, they was like, okay, I remember getting teased about such and such pictures back in the day. If something is taking you all the way, triggering that kind of stuff, you know, being connected, you know, somebody, something's triggering, somebody says something that's triggering you back to that. That's what you're saying. I need to connect it. I need to re, I need to cut ties with anything that's triggering me, triggering those, those memories, you know, back to that. So, yeah. Looking at your cards here, it looks like, um, like I said, you and your person have experienced that um, two and five. And again, we it brings us back to seven. So it's just making a lot of sense to you all now because seven is the number for completion and source is the one that's making it make sense. So it's two situations that source has been trying to tell you. I need you. Like they feel like you're deceptive. You feel like they are deceptive. You feel like they are snake. They feel like you're a snake. You know, it's been time. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just been time. Like two situa two types of situations in particular. So it's like, take your power back. They let them take their power back and just move on. You know, just move on. You got to also think about, and this is why I talk about journaling so much, because you also got to think about where were you at the time? Were you going through some things at the time? Were they going through some things at the time? Sometimes people feel like, okay, hey, let's, bygone, let's let bygones be bygones. I was going through some stuff. You were going through some stuff. Because sword energy is, you know, challenges your power and your intellect. So if you were going through loss of loved ones, that could you could have felt powerless and you could have been so hurt you didn't even realize you were hurting other people, right? 
But the reason why it's time to move on is because it would be too triggering. It would reopen back at that wound on that frequency of just maybe how people in your mind, which would be valid, how people could have been insensitive around the time you lost loved ones. Or for them, if they lost loved ones, how insensitive you they could have felt like you were when they lost loved ones. Like I said, it would be too triggering. It's just time to move on. Time to move on in all fairness. So, yeah. Seven of Cups, like I said, is very tempting to vibrate on a low frequency, but it's not worth it. It's, it's not. When I say tempting to vibrate on a low frequency, because again, you're learning how to train yourself to stop going along with just any kind of flow. This is where you say, okay, yeah, you are Sagittarius and you're a mutable sign and you're used to kind of going along with the flow. However, you also have a moon sign. Your moon has an affinity with the water, right? Your feelings, your emotions, subconscious habits, your quality of relationships, friendships, your intuition. So every time you feel like your water is getting low and you feel like you're getting tempted to vibrate on a low frequency, we know that the devil is the tempter. That would be the seven of cups, right? And you feel like I'm tempted to talk about something. I'm tempted to. So it's just like there's alternatives. There's alternatives, right? So that's what I see somebody doing. That's that's what the work is. That's what the work is. It's like, okay, so, so I'm so glad that you are bringing things to my attention and helping me to move on, you know, from these relationships. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. Yeah. It's easy to engage in those conversations about people. You know, they succumb to passive and powerless behavior and they they a snake and I knew I could never trust them and all of this other stuff. Well, they could say the same thing about you, right? But what does that help anybody in, in terms of your growth? Because you're trying to attract a, a partnership in business and or in love. And so sources are saying, hang in there with yourselves, right? The the prayers that you have been praying are, are here, Right? And so it's just that it was never meant for them to step through your vault door. It was meant for them to go to a, uh, it was meant for them to come all the way to your vault door and then stop. That's the part somebody never saw coming. That's the part somebody never saw coming. Right. We are not, you can lead people to water, but you can't force people to drink. You can't force people to see your 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 spiritual growth you can't you can't force somebody to see your spiritual growth you can't force people to see your intuition like you don't they don't know you know but everything is lining up perfectly for you here we have the three of pentacles here everything is lining up perfectly for you so you desire teamwork um and so your wishes are being fulfilled yep your wishes are being fulfilled in every area of your life your wishes are being fulfilled that's when somebody's going to start seeing some of your family members. You know, you're going to start seeing certain family members differently that you just always thought from a kid. You're going to be like, man, I never thought in a gazillion years that I wouldn't invite them to the wedding, that I, that they would not be in, in this phase of my life where I am. But you saw some things. See, once you see snake activity, you can't unsee it. You know what I'm saying? Let's take it back to the garden, Right. You sitting in the garden with your sun hat on, you got your sunglasses on, you got the radio playing in the background, you got your garden tools in your hand, you see something come slithering through the grass, it got your attention now, right? Even though it was a non-venomous snake, now your eyes darting from left to right. You checking the rest of the yard, if there's any venomous snakes out there, now you riding up to the to the to the what to the Lowe's and the Home Depot and you trying to find all the spray and the you trying to you know that kind of thing you trying to make sure there's nothing else out there or whatever your local gardener and that kind of stuff here we have the page of wands here so somebody is definitely going to be feeling a lot stronger so you know whereas you spent a lot of time trying to figure out you know why somebody people were giving you a cold shoulder about some things and you kept you know you're going to feel a lot stronger you know about it um just moving forward here we have the seven of cups and um you know while your wishes are being fulfilled um there's some people who yeah your wishes are being fulfilled some people may be going back to some drinking and partying some stuff they like they they're tempted to vibrate on a lower frequency you like i said your wishes are being fulfilled 
there's some stuff happening. It's not something that you, you know, they could be feeling like they having a nervous breakdown where you're moving through a rite of passage. I don't feel like you're, you're wishing any harm on anybody. You know, you just had a different phase in your life. Here we have, um, two, two, seven, eight. Yeah. They may something about something about them feeling like they're going crazy in their mind or feeling self-sabotaged or, um, somebody may be scared of going to jail or something is something is going on here. You know, they may be spending a lot of time drinking because they may have been around some people who are wearing a whole bunch of masks, something going on about money. But that's why I keep trying to tell people, hey, look. Yeah, three and five is eight plus two is ten. Yeah, some people look like, you know, some people, some people wanting to be so bad a part of some things. Hmm. I just feel like some people just didn't see your heart. That's what I'm looking at here in the cards. I feel like somebody, some people did not see your heart. They didn't see. Um, but again, like like I said, source allows source to go ahead and just, you know, let some people part some ways. Just, you know, let's keep the vibration high. Let's keep the vibration. Cause I don't feel like you wishing any bad on anybody. Just keep the vibrations high. Yep. Keep the vibrations high. <clears throat> You and whoever it is, they, um, you know, they, um, <sighs> here's the five of wands. Some energies definitely want to reach out to you. You know, they, they want to reach out to you. They want to talk to you. They want to tell you some stuff, but yeah, you want a different frequency. Your third eye, God is telling you everything that's going on. Here we have eight of wands. So it's just like, get as far away from that as possible. Like you're on a motorcycle, just get as far away from it as possible. Here we have the um, Queen of Wands. You're in good spirits. You're feeling happy, charismatic, and free. Like I said before, like I feel like sometimes people feel like when when things are like not moving fast enough. You know, sometimes people feel like I got to rush. I got to be. I got to do this. Things aren't moving fast enough. I got to be blah blah blah. You know, X Y and Z. And sometimes it just doesn't. It doesn't pay. You know, so giving people the cold shoulder and judging people because they not a part of this and they not a part of that and all of this other was like and, and you ended up right here here we had king of pentacles and this where you ended up rich you ended up ending up rich so and then they end up on the outside of the vault door that's not something that you pray for but to see how it started, it started out with two types of energies giving you the cold shoulder about some stuff. And it's going through a whole story right here. Your wishes are being fulfilled. Somebody going back to drinking and going back out. And I don't know if somebody's on some poles, swinging on some poles. It's, some, it's, a, it's, mm, it's a lot of stuff going on. Drinking, partying, doing all kinds of stuff. Going back to head hung low, right outside there. They feel like they want to be a part of something. But then they feel left out again. It's just... I'm just saying prayers for somebody. Here we have the six of yeah, so move on, like I said, move on in childlike faith. You're not um and I feel like you'll be tempted to kind of sort of help them, but they're gonna have to learn. Somebody gonna have to just really learn. So you're gonna have to put a manhole cover over the past and just release it. Just release it in love. Release it in learn love because um Somebody's going to have to get from around a bunch of manipulation and toxic energies, right? I feel like some people just, like I said, they just looking for, they just easily manipulated. And I feel like you may be trying to tell people like, it's just, it's not worth being around certain types of energies. When you try to tell people and people don't want to listen, it's just not worth being around certain types of energies. You got to listen to your intuition, tap in, you know, but I'm telling you that wanting to be, you know, a seat at people's table, that thing is, a, it's, that's like a drug for some people. I'm serious. Some people want so bad to be a part of this. Be able, they got to be at the, all the clubs, at the parties, at the, they got to be at the, you know, the latest this and that. They got to have on a this and, yeah. And people will determine your value. They will determine your worth for you. 
Oh, they don't have the latest this. They don't have the latest that. Mm. They don't have the, you know, family members will try to say, oh, well, we, gonna, we, want, we want all the um, family members that live in this particular zip code to come to the such and such. We can, have, we can brag about these particular family members. They got these kind of degrees. They got that. And, oh, so-and-so. Um, any kind of scandal or whatever in families. Like, all of this stuff is already, people already know this kind of stuff happens in families, in everybody's family, where these people over here are doted on. It, it all happens outside of your family, too, but family is the training ground. Whoever you grew up around would be, like, consider family, right? It's not always blood relatives. And so that's what Source is trying to teach somebody is, like, you already know this stuff. It's like you, somebody should have their PhD. Everybody should have their PhD in family. Like for real, whoever you was raised around, it's just different spirit. It's the same spirit in different bodies, right? You always meet people who just want to be a part of something. They just, they, they'll do anything to be a part of something. And so you trying to tell people like, mm -mm. here's the seven of cups again. It's a lot of sevens coming out because source is making a whole lot of stuff. A lot of stuff is starting to make sense to you. Of just like not be because remember water connects us to also quality of relationships. It also connects us with friendships. When y'all gonna look at some of your own family members and be like, man, I am so glad they didn't they left my name off the list this year. Mm hmm Five of Wands. Yep. Where some people ain't wanna call you before. They was too busy talk talking um toxic whatever about you now all of a sudden somebody dug way down in the drawer and found your number sagittarius mm -mm. leave my number way at the bottom of the drawer with the ketchup and the, and the salt and pepper packets <laughs> leave my number down there right so yeah so that's what i'm saying right here i'm telling you because here we had the magician card yeah this connects us to Mercury. Remember I was saying these two planets right here are ruled by this card right here, Mercury. This is the messenger card. Yeah, because people are starting to get the message loud and clear that, hey, being around a whole bunch of toxicity, you know, all of this, when we talk about creativity, is like, okay, it seems like it's a bunch of fun, a bunch of whole bunch of splashing. And when you're talking about water, but when you around, I feel like somebody feels overwhelmed now emotionally. Like, okay, I went way out in the deep end and realized I don't have on a life jacket and I can't swim. I can't swim in this. Like this was too overwhelming. Whoever it is, they feel like, okay, this is, I, I, I feel like this is just too much. Right. And so even with all of that, there's a tapping into the water within. Okay. I need to cut off some people. That's the savior right there. I need to cut off some energies so I can, I can save myself so I can move on. So Yeah, but um, like I said, you, you'll you be tempted to reach out and well, some energies are, they're trying to reach out now. They're hoping that they, and, and the fact, here's the thing, some of the energies, for some of y'all, some of the energies may, you know, send you a text message or else it could be some of your exes trying to come back, sending you a hey, big head text. It could be all kinds of stuff. Hey, just, you know, reaching out. It could be some people who have who have talked negatively about you or let other people talk negative. Hi, just, you know, trying to check on you, saying hi, checking on you, whatever, because they want to engage you in conversation. And the fact that you're not being rude or giving them an icy reception is throwing some people off. Like, they're like, okay, they're not being rude. or like, well, what happened to you? You're not being rude. Why? Because you're just adjusting your crown. You're going right on back to being work, but but they're emotionally wounded because there somebody is in some stuff that's over their head at this point. Yeah. Somebody is around a lot of toxicity and um I feel like somebody is trying to get, you know, trying to get away from something. You know, I don't, I don't feel like somebody is fleeing anything. I just feel like somebody's just like, okay, I just need a break. Like if they could just take a vacation, like if they could just, you know how sometimes you, you tell your friends, Hey, let's go take a trip. You know, we should go, we should take a trip. We should go take a beach. Like they in their mind wishing that day was here again. Like they can say, remember we used to go to the beach and we used to go put our feet in the sand or, you know, go jump in the water or whatever. They kind of wishing like for those days back again. I feel like that's what somebody is kind of wishing like, you know, for those days back again. But this where you are closing out cycles.
Yeah, somebody's still telling lies about you, but you don't care. Here we have, they are not happy without you because they're not happy within. But more money is coming across your path. Yeah, you, somebody's toxic masculinity. Yeah, somebody failed at stealing your identity. Healed people just move differently. Yeah. Listen to your intuition. That's a lot of water you pour out. When I look at your cards right here, because somebody, your creativity is right there, that's all of that is sacral chakra energy, right? You're going to have to do a better job, Sagittarius, of identifying energy vampires. And, and part of the way that you're going to start learning how to do that, and you can start doing it now, like now that the moon is in Scorpio when you watch this video, is going all the way back to anything that you may have been ashamed of in your past or embarrassed or whatever. Going online and looking up, you know, how to do a cord cutting ceremony, right? And cutting ties with anything that you could have been ashamed of. It could have been, you know, pictures that you were ashamed of how you looked when you were little and said, you know what, let me speak to that little, my inner child. Go back and write that, you know, little boy or little girl a love letter. If I had to do it all over again, and I didn't love that person. If you got a yearbook or whatever, go back and just say, you know what? If I had to do it all over again, I would have told you just how beautiful or how, how handsome you were or that everything was going to be okay. Or as if I would have put everybody's idea of what they thought you were going to be to the side. You know, that kind of stuff. You're cutting ties away of the negative and the unhealthy and wounded or wanting to be a part of that part of you, right? And start testing it. Like if you go to, if you feel like, okay, you feel overwhelmed going to a grocery store at a certain time of the day because there's a whole bunch of people in there, do yourselves a favor and limit how much you get and so you can be in and out. Like start testing yourself, not staying in spaces where you're so overwhelmed. You just like get agitated and irritated. Or if you go to the gym, start scheduling when it's not that many people in the gym. Like start so that you can process your emotions and you can start journaling. Like slow things down so you can start processing, you know, your thoughts. If you work, if you work a remote job or something, you know, going in maybe a couple of days a week and just working from home other days so you can start learning how to tap in. Really, really learning how to listen to your intuition. Right? That's why when you start learning how to tap in and listen to your intuition, there's a lot. You're going to start looking at your home as a very sacred place. You won't just be inviting anybody into your home. You won't be just going to just anybody's house. You'll start noticing things that even if you go in certain places, you'll be able to see, you'll start to see shape shifting on people. And you're like, oh my God, never saw that before. You'll start picking up on things and their energy that you didn't want to see before. And thanking source, oh my God, I know I had to be protected to be around that. Here we have first red flag, you want to pray and meditate. Yep. Somebody was dealing with a changeling. Y'all know what a changeling is, right? If you don't know, let me tell you. So a changeling is a demon who has been substituted for a human baby. Mm -hmm. You have the gift of clear cognizance. That's psychic knowledge about other people. You also have the gift of premonition. That's a forewarning. Your next love interest will make you happier. For those of you all who are single and want to be in a romantic interest. That's why I say practice. If you want to live a softer life, first of all, make peace with source removing energies out of your life. Make peace with the, the old you. The old you who used to be ashamed and embarrassed where you came from, how you look. Look back at old pictures. Go back and look at how you used to wear your hair, haircut, how you used to dress if you lived in a bad neighborhood, wherever. Just make peace with the old you, right? And then start looking at how far you've come. You've accomplished something, right? Even if that just meant, hey, you know what? I took one class. I learned one thing. I feel like I accomplished one thing. I woke up and I said, today, I'm going to speak highly of myself. See, a lot of people dismiss that kind of stuff. But that's what I, I found, like, I, I figured you all are doing, right? You know, you just, um, you know, learning how to replace the any negative with the positive. You Let source change out your friendship circle. Because this is what's headed your way. A lot of wealth, a whole new change of scenery. Mm -hmm. right now so stay in the present and don't get too far ahead of the flow you'll soon trust that nothing more will come than can be handled each moment yeah 
because what's happening is that, you know, I feel like there's some people who's, you know, who could feel overwhelmed emotionally right now. And, um, they're, de they're dealing with a, a wide range of emotions, guilt, shame, embarrassment, fear that they're going to have to work through as well during this moon in Scorpio, because that's everybody, you know, they've just the, the gear and remember time is relative. So they can be dealing with some guilt, shame and fear that's going on right now in their lives. And as well as in their past, just like you could be, you know, as well as your past. And so you don't have to mix theirs with yours. You too busy focusing on yours doing core cutting ceremonies for yours creativity i'm a ball of creative energy creative ideas circulate my very being i tap into all aspects of my imagination i command my inventive skills to step forward i connect it to my truest self i am solution oriented my gifts create room for me i am grateful for my innate gifts mm -hmm. yep you are grateful for your innate gifts so it's a it's a lot going on with 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 everybody right now as these moon as this moon is moving through these zodiac signs and um and so you just make sure you're protecting your energy here are the questions for the moon and scorpio for those of you all who like the questions um first question is what are your stories of your ancestors comma your past lives the second question is do you, um, I mean, where do you go to heal your connection with your roots? The third question is, do you feel truly empowered in your relationships and career? The fourth question, is there a deep trauma that you need to look at, heal and release during this moon? And then last but not least is who are the five, who are the people, meaning the therapists, the healers and so on, who could help you to dive deeper, who could help you to dive deeper. A lot of people don't know why they feel the way that they do. That's why I try to provide thought invoking uh, questions to try to help people to make it all make sense. And so as you're journaling and, and you know, you're trying to make it all make sense for yourselves, um, you know, in preparation for this year of wealth, wealth in terms of, you know, increasing your knowledge, wealth of knowledge and, and power of self and wealth of creativity like you're trying to add to your creativity you're trying to add to your your uh your health right because health is wealth right so you're not let, trying to let people being around toxic energy stress you out you can't even enjoy your life this part of your life and so sacred geometry because there's signs all around you there's signs all around you you'll start to when you start to um recognize how many energy vampires you you've been around you'll start to even see um the trees differently they'll start to take on different forms you'll start to see all kinds of shapes and signs all around you like oh my god okay this is reminding me of this this is reminding me of that first it'll trip some people out like did that cloud look like such and such did that tree look like such and such it start taking on different you know um forms so that's what i'm seeing for you all but it's actually really increasing your um, creative gifts. That's what's really happening here. So a lot of things are becoming clearer and clearer and clearer to you. Here we have number six, I am nurturing. Your heart is your gift. You are a natural born nurturer and have a great talent for helping and healing others. You are the epitome of self-sacrifice and a protector of those you love. Yeah. But what you won't be nurturing is toxicity. That's what I can see right now because you're cutting ties first. It's like you're, you're, it's not like, but you are going through a rebirth. So you're cutting ties with holding on and harboring anybody else's toxicity. You're going through your own rebirth and you're, you're planting some new seeds to grow within you. And that's what you're giving birth to. If that makes sense to somebody, hopefully these questions have helped you and I will see you all in the next reading again. Happy full moon phase. Technically the full moon is on the 23rd of May. You may be watching this video on the 21st uh, of May. So we're in the full moon phase. You can go ahead and start doing your full moon rituals um, and, uh, three days prior, three days after. And um, I'll see you in the next reading. Bye.